everybody, welcome to my cat portrait drawing demo. Today we're doing the portrait drawing using a combination of soft pastel stick and then we're using the Derwent um, pastel pencils as well as the Carbothello pastel pencils. And I'll have more information about the materials in the description, um, but we are doing the soft pastel painting today. There's also a few uh, blending tools that are really helpful to use um, to help keep uh, everything looking really soft and blended. So I like to start by laying down just a background layer with the soft pastel stick and then from there we can spray it with either alcohol or water to um, get just like a nice uh, background color so that we don't have any paper texture showing through. You're going to want to make sure that your paper can handle wet media first or you might end up dissolving your paper. Um, this is UART sanded pastel paper. I really like it because it really holds on to um, the pastel really well. It does take some getting used to. It's basically an extremely deluxe sandpaper. Then the next step, we just want to do a quick outline of our cat. Make sure to look at your reference photo. Um, every cat is a little bit different. Um, I'm using a dark brown pastel pencil just to, um, in case the drawing still shows through, it will be good, also as a shadow color. So you want to make sure you have like a rounded shape for the head, two pointy ears, and your snout coming out. And here I'm also starting to uh, lay down my shadow shapes. If you have a um, cool light source, like I do, like a bright open window, you're going to actually have warm shadows. So initially I put down some blues, but I'm actually covering that up with uh, some warm browns. And then starting to put in the local color for the light side. This is a yellow tabby, so I have some yellow going on there, as well as some light kind of blue-purple highlights at the top. So just continuing to add our, in my light areas, I'm kind of refining my drawing as I go. Primarily blocking in with the soft pastel stick. Then once we have blocked in the large areas of color with our uh, soft pastel sticks, those are the Rembrandt soft pastels, we can start going in with our uh, finer uh, pastel pencils. The, the point of those are a little finer with the uh, detail areas. So just getting all of the different folds of the eyes, getting the different folds of the nose, all the little plane changes there, as well as the line at the mouth. Uh, those are really helpful to do with the pastel pencils. So I usually work from the pastel sticks all the way down to the pastel pencils. Pastel pencils are also really great for adding details like stripes. Uh, when you're adding the stripes, you want to make sure that you have kind of an inconsistent width and you keep them a little bit soft so that it looks like it's part of the fur and not sitting on top of the fur. And I did spend a lot of time trying to get the eye looking good. The eyes are the windows to the soul. Cats have very expressive eyes, um, so just getting that in there. And then when you're adding the fur texture, it's good to pay attention to the direction of the fur. So fur kind of flows outwards from an animal's nose, all the way, like kind of outwards from their nose, all the way down their body. So when you're adding these little strokes, uh, make sure you're paying attention to the fur texture so that you can really um, recreate that visual texture in your drawing. reestablishing the background. Um, adding background color can be a good opportunity to also do some edge control on your cat. Um, if its head got a little too big, if it's um, a little bit inaccurate in the outlines, you can always push that back with the soft pastel sticks. Uh, pastels do layer fairly well, so you should be able to cover up um, any issues by reestablishing your background.
And then if you do have a yellow tabby, that uh, kind of light, light beige colored pencil is extremely helpful uh, to get all the light shining on the little hairs. I'm also going in with a kind of a terracotta brown uh, pencil to try to get it to look a little bit more uh, gingery and a little bit more red. Uh, they are reddish yellow cats. And here, just paying attention a little bit to the anatomy of the shoulder, trying to make sure you have good separation between the leg and the body by putting those shadow shapes in. And then at this point, I was adding in some purple for the reflected light. The reason I chose purple was because it is the complementary color of yellow. So if I have a yellow cat and I put purple shadows in, or purple reflected light into the shadows, it will really help accentuate the purple color. I generally like to avoid using gray or black because if you can get some much richer shadow tones if you just mix and layer many colors on top of one another. So at this point, I felt like something was off about my drawing, so I turned it upside down. Um, your eye is constantly correcting what you're looking at. It's trying to make things more symmetrical and even uh, to try to make sense of what your brain is trying to make sense of what your eyes are seeing. So a good trick can be either to look at your artwork in a mirror to get the opposite way or just to turn the whole thing upside down and your reference upside down. This way we can really fix inaccuracies and see what's wrong. Um, I saw here that I, there was actually like my shadows were much lighter in certain areas, and initially my head was definitely too long, so I've been fixing that as I go here. And then this last stage of the drawing is all about uh, refining small details. So we're looking at the small, plain changes of the face, uh, just small gradient areas, adding more stripes in, uh, edge control, making sure all our edges make sense. In general, I've been trying to keep this very soft to try to get the fluffy cat texture, uh, but there are some harder lines around the eye and the bottom of the mouth uh, where it casts that dark shadow. And at this stage, I actually did go in with a a black pencil um, just very lightly to try to get my dark brown just a little bit darker and finally we can go in and add uh, with a white pencil our whiskers if you uh, some cats also have black whisper whiskers so keep an eye on that but that way it will really stand out against our background and our cat to have those white whiskers here we're just finishing up our drawing um, this is my cat Mordecai he's a great model uh, standing below a blue window and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. You can find more information about the materials used and the paper and everything like that in the description. So here is the finished piece. Just a minute here. And there he is. Alright, happy drawing everybody. Hope you make some great pastel artworks and I'll talk to you next time.